Welcome to worship this morning. It's the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, and to anyone that might be joining us online uh, as well, welcome to you too. Uh, it is a communion Sunday, so if you have not uh, gathered elements, you might want to do that uh, for the, the service. Um, and those of you in person, um, you might want to grab your communion kit too if you have not yet done so. A uh, special word of thanks to those of you who are wearing masks. Uh, we appreciate that very much. Um, the decision has been made by the council uh, that we continue wearing masks. Um, and they consulted with, the, of course, uh, medical professionals within our community and the CDC and Minnesota Department of Health guidelines, all that good stuff. So as we try to um, uh, protect our neighbors as cases are increasing in our area. So we're thankful for uh, your willingness to do that. We will keep you up to date as things change. Um, special uh, um, celebration today, uh, Mel and Marianne Hauk celebrated their 62nd wedding anniversary today. They were here at the first service, and so uh, we celebrate with them. And then also, um, uh, a time of celebration and sadness. Um, Bev and Pat Durland um, are moving um, out of state, and so they were charter members here at Living Waters, and then we celebrate uh, their time here with us and, and wish them well um, as they move. Special word of thanks to our musicians today. Uh, Julian Eitenauer, did I, okay, good, got it right. Uh, Brad Giese, Mara Janke, Dennis Larson, and then, um, we have a vocal group who will be uh, providing some music for us as well. Uh, their services or their uh, music has been pre-recorded, so that will be a part of our service as well. Um, and the group is called Vocal Envy, uh, and they consist of uh, Carla Reichel, Mitchell Hurley, Christina Torino, George Shephoister, and director Amanda Quinn, who is actually a teacher here at our Mont Montessori school. And then a uh, special word of thanks to our technology team and our reader this morning, uh, Mara Janke. We are still in need of an education coordinator, so if you know someone, um, please let them know, um, and they can drop off an application here at the, here at the church or go online and do that. Um, and then we do ask that you continue to pray uh, for the persons that might be interested in applying for the position as well as those people who will be interviewing uh, for the position. There is a table out in the narthex with uh, produce on it. If you are interested in any of it, help yourself. Um, if there is some left, we will be sharing that with the food shelf. Um, and if you have uh, extra produce from your garden that you would like to share, please bring that in as well. On Sunday, September 12th, we will be having Rally Sunday, and that will be one service at 9 a.m. It will be our Sunday school kickoff time, um, and there will be a carnival for our younger people, and then um, also a kindergarten blessing and blessing of uh, students and um, teachers and things like that. We are also going to be looking at the history of living waters that day as well. We're going to take a look at uh, where you've been, where you are now, and then we'll be thinking about where you are going. And then there is also a special announcement that's gonna be coming up that day as well. So, uh, tune in. We are still collecting donations for school supplies and for the homeless, and we've got all sorts of things back here that uh, people have brought in already, and we're thankful for that. Uh, we are still collecting, so bring stuff in um, whenever you can. And then uh, our water source books are in the back, and basically that's, um, we can keep track of contact tracing in case someone would happen to have COVID and we can just let other people know uh, in case that comes up. And then also there's opportunities to sign up for service, to uh, ways to serve other people, or if uh, there's something that you might be needing, uh, you can sign up there as well. And uh, for those of you who, are put, who put on your name tags, thank you so much. Um, I'm still getting to know people, some of you I know already, but if we have new people in our building, it's also a way for them to, uh, to call you by name. So thank you for that. Any other announcements that we can think of right now? All right, with that being said, we will now join in our opening song, Canticle of the Turning. <laughs> Just 
Beloved children of God, together we seek God's path for us and our faith community. May God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Center our lives in the water and the word. Let you nourish your souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Here is on our world and on our way. Here he is on every day. Let us seek the face of our God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of overflowing grace, we come to you with repentant hearts. Forgive us for shallow thankfulness. Forgive us for passing by the ones in need. Forgive us for setting our hopes on fleeting treasures. Forgive us our neglect and thoughtlessness. Bring us home from the wilderness of sin and strengthen us to serve you in all that we do and say. Through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. We pause for silence and reflection. Come, all who are weary, all who carry heavy burdens. God is gentle and tender to us. God is generous and faithful, forgiving sins without number, welcoming all to the feast, giving us a place among the saints. We are home in God's mercy, now and forever. 
Amen. Remembering that in baptism, we are made children of God, marked with the cross of Christ forever, and set free to love one another. Please mark the sign of the cross on your forehead. In place of our children's message today, uh, Vocal Envy will be uh, providing music for us. May the world rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the wind blow soft upon your face. Normally I would say a prayer following our children's sermon, but I think uh, their music was, uh, could say it way better than I could. Uh, and now another song from Vocal Envy as our invitation to scripture. <laughs> A reading from Matthew, the sixth chapter. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. 
but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust, rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Here ends the reading. A reading from Matthew, the 13th chapter. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. Here ends the readings. Today's text has me thinking a lot about how I spend my money and how I spend my time. What have I placed value on? Am I spending my time and my money on trivial things, on things that give momentary pleasure and maybe don't go beyond fulfilling a larger purpose? Is the way I spend my time and money selfish? So before we start thinking about what kind of judgment we place on these things, let me explain a little bit. First, we are all given a certain amount of time to use as we wish. Sometimes we put our time or money to good use, and sometimes we don't. Of course, that is subjective. What one person thinks is a waste of time might be refreshing and rejuvenating to another. Personally, I'm not someone that goes and gets massages, but there are people, and you might be one of them, that finds that that is something that helps ground you, and that maybe it's something that helps relieve your stress in ways that some of the rest of us might not understand. It helps you to show up in areas of your life where you can respond rather than react. You've been allowed to put down your burdens, and let go of the weight of the world that's weighing on your shoulders. I'm one of the people that likes to spend time out in the woods or outdoors, maybe enjoying the birds or watching a spider navigate its web and maybe what was caught in it, and look at the various bugs and the critters and navigate the way they are making their way through the world. I wonder about their purpose, and what the world might be like without them. And while others might get the heebie-jeebies and choose to stay as far away as possible, that's not always what I do. Granted, I am not gonna invite them into my home, and I will kill a mosquito, but I don't kill all the things that are out there and moving around just because I don't know what they are. God created a diverse world and it makes me wonder about and question about the many, many people that are out there and the systems and the worlds that I'm not even aware of. Jungles and deserts and Arctic tundra. And I can't even imagine all the kinds of aquatic life that are in the lakes and the oceans. Am I living a consumer life one in which I'm always taking and thinking about mainly me and my wants and needs? Or am I living a life in such a manner that others might benefit too? Money, for example. Is it just something for me to spend on myself? Or are there ways that I might be able to spend it so that others might benefit as well? There is a building right here that is a central gathering place where you and others can come, hear the good news of Jesus, and be refreshed 
so that you might be able to go out into that mission field that's beyond these walls and you can share that with others. You have the opportunity to put your dollars to work and support projects and ministries that are taking place here. And often those are things that we as individuals might not be able to do on our own. We might not be able to get much to support the food shelf or to do much to help with the supplies here, but when we combine our resources, we're able to do exceedingly great things as we share God's love and compassion and treasures with others. God's economy is one that builds and grows exponentially. Whether we're sharing our time and our talents or sharing our monetary resources, God provides for us in abundance. There are weeks when we come into this space and the shelves in our food shelf are bare. Hardly anything on the shelf. And there are other times that we come in such as now when there's lots of packages and boxes of things and canned goods, things that we can share with one another. And it's full because of your generosity, and the generosity that God has placed on your heart as you seek to serve others, to place value on others, to see people as treasures, to see them as beloved children of God, just as each one of us is also a beloved child of God. Excuse me. <coughs> I read this post on social media yesterday. It was shared by an individual over three years ago by the name of Thomas McFall. Hi guys. I know I usually just post bad jokes on my Twitter, but bear with me because I wanted to share something. So in one of my management classes, I sit in the same seat in the front every day. Every single day I sit there. Now I also sit next to some foreign guy that barely speaks English. The most advanced thing I've heard this guy say in English is, Wow, my muffin is really good. This guy also has a habit of stacking everything he owns in the exact space I sit. His books, his food, his phone are always right on my desk space. Now, every single time I walk into the class, this guy says, ah, Tom, you here, okay and starts frantically clearing my desk of his belongings. And then he makes it a habit to say, ready for class, yeah? And he gives me a high five. Every day, this guy gives me a high five. I was always annoyed with this guy. I'm thinking, dude, you know I sit in this seat every day. Why are you always stacking your stuff here? And the last thing I want to do is give the guy who barely speaks my language high fives at eight in the morning. Just get your stuff off my desk. But today, I came to class and was running a few minutes late. I'm standing outside because I had to send a quick text. I could see my usual space through the door out of the corner of my eye. Of course, my desk was filled with all of his belongings the usual. As I'm standing there on my phone, another guy who is also late walks into the class before me and tried to take my seat since it's closest to the door. The guy sitting next to me stops this dude from sitting down and says, I'm sorry, my good friend Thomas sits here. It was then that I realized this guy wasn't putting stuff on my seat to annoy me. He was saving me a seat every morning. And this whole time, he saw me as a friend, but I was too busy thinking about myself to take him into consideration. Cheesy as it sounds, 
I was touched. I ended up going into class, and of course, he cleared the seat and said, ah, Tom, you're here, okay. And I did get a high five. At the end of class, I ended up asking him if he wanted to grab a bite to eat with me. And we talked for a while. I got through the broken English. The guy moved here from the Middle East to pursue a college education in America. He plans to go back after he gets his degree. He's got two kids and a wife. He works full time and sends all his leftover money back home to his wife. I asked him how he liked America as well. He said he misses his family, but it's exciting to be here. He also said, not every American is nice to me like you are, Tom. I bought lunch, of course. Dude deserves it. He gave me a high five for buying lunch. Gotta keep up tradition. Moral of the story, don't do what I do and constantly only think about yourself. It took me, ne it took me nearly the entire semester to get my head out of my backside and realize this guy was just trying to be my friend. Better late than never, I suppose. We often have our own agenda. We can have money and possessions, cars and trucks and boats and collections of knickknacks and this thing and that thing. And there's nothing to say that these things are bad. But how do we use them as tools to share the good news? Do we have our priorities in order? Are we loving things and using people? Or are we using things and loving people? When we aren't sure what to do, we can use God's word as our guide. We can use our prayers. Do our words and actions display kindness, compassion, and forgiveness? Are we enjoying and embracing the diversity of God's creation? Are we curious and filled with gratitude that we aren't all the same? The creation story reminds us that God didn't create us all the same and that several times God looks at creation and says that it's good. We are called to live and to love in an ordered fashion, to love God and to love others. The treasures of this earth are fleeting and of no lasting value, but the ways we love others carries rewards beyond understanding and reaches places that touch our hearts and our minds. And sometimes those are things that we remember long after someone has passed. The things that we can hold in our hearts and treasure on a regular basis. May your treasures be heavenly. Amen. Uh, 
under my feet and a light unto my path. I will not forget your love for me, and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side. I will love you to the Let us confess our faith. We believe in God, the creator who breathed life into all creation. It is God whom we seek in the wilderness of life. We believe in Jesus Christ, whose death and resurrection is God's promise of everlasting love. Jesus is with us on the journey of life. He goes before us, showing us the way and behind us to encourage. He is beside us as a friend, watching over us and giving us peace. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who listens as we cry out from the wilderness, giving us the wisdom to discern God's will for us, that we might grow as a faith community. Amen. As we share our tithes and offerings today, I would like to highlight one of the many ministries carried out by your support of Living Waters. Some of the space here at Living Waters is rented out by the Montessori School that holds classes here year round. Young people are learning and our building serves as a space for that to take place. We're grateful for the work that they do in bringing up young people and your support of Living Waters and the many ministries that are carried out. We invite you to continue to share your many gifts as we carry out, carry out those ministries. Let us pray. God of all good gifts, we thank you for your many and abundant blessings that you have given us. We give back to you what you have first given us. Please bless these gifts that are used to share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we'll now have a special music from Vocal Envy, Wade in the Water. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another. And if you are joining us online, I invite you to send a text to someone to let them know that you are thinking of them. Right, where we would normally be doing our prayers, uh, it will be another vocal selection, and I invite you to lift your prayers up during this time, uh, silently as they're singing. Can you hear the prayer of the children on
We have all been given the free gift of God's love, and the Lord is the host of this meal, and all are welcome. Even if we're still trying to discern what to do with the gifts that we have been given. <coughs> On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat this, or take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You have your packet and you can peel off the top layer for your bread. The body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Uh
Vocal Envy will be providing more music for us. Sing me up to heaven. Somewhere morning when the sight is on. pray. We come again to you, God, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy, you have embraced us and healed us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way as we seek to grow into your will. Guide us out of the wilderness. Equip us with wisdom to discern how we can best embrace others with mercy and healing. Amen. We'll now join in our sending song, God's Work, Our Hands. Free, humbled and honored, gifted by grace. 
Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with mercy and grace. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. As followers of Jesus, we seek to reach, teach, and care. Go and seek and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.